Hello everyone and thank you for checking out this video. In this video I will be tackling how I approach this stylized electrical vintage drill. Uh, this is my first time making a video like this where I do a breakdown. Uh, so please be bear with me if there are some inconsistency over my approach. And along with that I guess let's begin. For the starter, I decided to gather some references and do the blockout. For the references, I gathered them using uh, eBay, uh, ArtStation or different auction sites uh, and even Amazon. Uh, after I gathered the references, I decided to put them in POREF file and started doing the blockouts. For the blockouts, I decided to go for very simple shapes like hexagon for the stuff uh, that uh, makes the drill then then the half of a sphere and then I started to analyze the topology of the models by doing a paint over on them uh, because uh, sometimes you cannot really figure out the basic topology of some uh, models so uh, painting over them gives me some kind of idea of how it will look after figuring those out I decided to model as usual I tweaked this then that and kept modeling and that's exactly how my block out and reference phase went. Uh, I'll talk in between if, if I need to and for, for now I will just let the timeless go on. Thank you. For this area I decided to do a radi radial array and then made that three things in, in, in top of the drill bit. At this point I realized I really don't like the handle and I got some feedbacks to fix it so I decided to do another an topology analysis on it and did a paint over on it again and I figured out how to do the handle more easily this time uh, so in case you are also stuck with uh, anything that looks hard in, topolo in, top in, the t in topological term you should also draw some topology on it to get a better understanding of the thing Honestly, it took me quite a few uh, tri trials and errors to reach a state, a state where I actually like the handle. This handle played a very big problem to me because I, I had not modeled very in a, for a very long time, so I was having so much issues doing the handle here. But honestly, perseverance on again, and I was able to complete the handle. So around this time I was more or less done with the block out and I was preparing it for ZBrush Pass so I was adding poly groups here, we're adding different materials on it. And once I was done I applied the modifiers and decided to export it to ZBrush.
during the hyperly phase, I, I decided to just fix the topology by z remeshing and dynameshing and joining them together or booleaning some stuff. And after doing those things, I decided to scrape things off using the dynamic trim brush or adaptive trim brush along with flatten brush and I decided to chip away the edges. I was chipping away edges to give it a more stylized organic feel and uh, even at this point I had no idea what type of style I was gonna go for since this was my first time trying a stylized as asset. Around this point, I decided to reference different type of games which has better stylized asset. For this uh, drill, I decided to follow Wayfinder's references because that game has very beautiful uh, stylized asset in, in my opinion. So I was trying to get the, that kind of look in my prop. I decided to scrape off the, the way that they, they scraped off their things and made their metals in, in the way they made. I was using the clay brush to build up and and chip away and then after building it up I decided to scrape away using the flatten brush. It gives a very a nice hammered metal type feel and I, and I keep doing it to different areas where I thought it would require Around this time I decided to add some scratches because honestly scratches makes everything look more stylized in my opinion. So I, I started to add some sty stylized scratches around the drill bit area to give it a more uh, torn down feel. This is, this is another demonstration of my, of the way I sculpted the hammered metal type fill. I decided to use the clay brush and then decided to scrape away using the flatten brush. I, I kept doing the negative value and positive value to give it a more hammered metal type fill. Uh, I, I got this kind of metal -like, metallic fill from the Wayfinder game so I decided to imitate that kind of fill. And honestly, in my opinion, this works very well. Like, uh, you build up the clay, then you use the flatten tool to negative, to give it a negative value, and then you repeat the process till you get a good result. And with that, I concluded my high poly pass, and I may I decided to go get ready for the next stage, which was retop and UV unwrapping. For the UV unwrapping stuff, I decided to first uh, decimate the whole high poly model, and then export it back into Zebra, uh, export it back into Blender. Uh, once we are back in Blender, I decided to uh, use the block out that I I sculpted on top, and use it as the base for low poly that I'm going to use to bake. I kept marching, marching different vertices, uh, different edge loops and bowl in some edge loops and keep doing the things that people do while retopping re their edge, retopping their models.
for the cylinder I was reducing the edge using the checker deselect select tool uh, I selected every vertices uh, of the edge and then just use checker deselect to reduce it one by one For the UV unwrap, I, I give you a very good advice and that is if, if you are unsure of where to put seams in hard surface, uh, you should follow this. Every hard edge is a seam but not every seam is a hard edge. So if you see any seam that is more than 90 degree angles, you should put a seam there. Here I was checking the textile density of straps and how it will pack. For the UV unwrap packing, I use the UV uh, pack master. It, it has a very good pack settings, and I think it was it went free for a few days back in 2022, I think. And for the textile density, I use textile checker, uh, which is also a free add-on. It helps you check the textile density. Here as you can see I put the model in marmoset to check how the bag looks and then re-put it back in substance printer to give have an idea of how the materials will look there. Once I was satisfied with everything here I moved on to the texturing process which, which is my favorite process in this video. For texturing I use Substance Painter and in it I decided to focus on the diffuse, uh, diffuse map first because if your diffuse map looks bad, your roughness and metallic will also look bad, bad as I was told by my Discord friends and experienced people there. So I here I picked a very mid, mid tone of bloom then I started to build on top of it I added uh, shadows light bellows hue differences and stuff like that uh, for substance painter I highly suggest you to use the light filter in because it gives a very good stylized baking baked light look that creates a good color variation in diffuse in my opinion along with light filter I highly suggest you to check out the wall space normal and the gradient filter I have also used the curvature map here to get some color variation near the curve uh, near the edges, and that's exactly how I pursued my texturing process here.
once I was happy with the diffuse, I used an anchor point trick to make a metal and roughness value, roughness map from the diffuse map. And then I put it in the other folders and from there I made a roughness and metallic maps. Since this was a stylized asset, I decided to keep the roughness very high, not very uh, glossy like your realistic stuff because otherwise it was looking very bad. And I continued using the same type of workflow in for different uh, parts of of the props. Like the bronze here was done in the same way, picking a half tone value and then creating the shadows using light filter, curvature or all space normal, and then getting different hues or color variation on top of it. And after a few trials and errors and different iterations, I was finally done with the texturing process and that marks the end of 80% of the project as I, I decided to move on to the rendering pass and the lighting pass. For the final render, I decided to use Blender and light my prop there. For the lighting, I used a very basic studio lighting with a top overhead lighting and a fill light. I used the Adobe complementary color selection to get a good idea of which complementary color to use and I highly suggest to check out the site as well. Once I was done with everything, I rendered it and put it in Adobe Photoshop to do some post-processing effects on it. 
I decided to go for a very painterly background so I drew the backgrounds with my tablet and get a painterly look. Since we're nearing the end of the video, thank you for bearing patience uh, with my inconsistent voiceover and very <coughs> troubled English. With that being said, I really appreciate that you stayed all this time with me and watched my video. I hope you enjoyed the process and if you want to give me some suggestion on how to get better at 3D or in uh, video editing or in anything, feel free to do so. That being said, I thank you with all of my heart and have a good day and night and a good life.